Hi folks, welcome to week four. We have finished with Socrates, and now we've finished with Plato as well. We are on to the third and final major Greek philosopher whom we will read, and that is Aristotle, a name that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Aristotle was a student of Plato, much like Plato was a student of Socrates. Uh, he founded his own academy called the Lyceum and did a lot of lecturing and teaching there. Um, he worked not only in philosophy, which was his main field, but also did a lot of what is now considered science. We talked about this in the first week. So not only did he do moral philosophy and, and various other sorts, but also biology, physics, psychology, astronomy. What we're reading from is called the Nicomachean Ethics. Uh, it's named for his son, Nicomachus. Uh, he delivered these ethics as lectures originally, and so Nicomachus was uh, the one recording them in the audience. He recorded them on scrolls, which were then turned into these separate books. We are reading the Nicomachean Ethics, uh, just a part of it, in the same way that we did the Re Republic. We're reading uh, books one and two, so the first two scrolls, basically, out of ten. Uh, the overall goal of the work is very similar to the Republic. It's to define both how one ought to live one's life and what a government ought to look like. So the big questions we'll be looking at, um, at least in part, are things like what is virtue, what is right and wrong, what activities should a government ban and what should a government encourage, what is excellence, and what does it mean to be human or to be a good human. So let's get to it. We start off in book one, and we start off with the premise that everything we do aims at some good. Then, And that's a pretty un uncontroversial sort of premise. It just means that what, when we do things, we do them for some reason. Even if the reason is for no reason. That still counts as a reason. So if I drive my car to work, I do it to get to work on time. Um, if I sit around bored, I do it to waste time. That's still for some good, and so the good here is just like the end. Um, so, you know, fairly common goods are things like money, happiness, love, food, etc. There are two kinds of goods that we want to talk about. Some of them are instrumental goods, and so these are things that are just steps along the path to something that we actually want. Money is the sort of... Uh, usual example of an instrumental good. Do you want money just to have money? No. You want money so you can buy other things. Those other things are sometimes intrinsic goods. These are the end of the line. And so, you know, if you listen to the Beatles, all you need is love. Um, that's the end of the line. All you need is love. You don't need anything else. That That's it. You're good. So, the question is, what good, which one, is the ultimate intrinsic good? Is it love? Is it, some, is it happiness? Is it money? Is it glory is something else. And so Aristotle's going to say that politics is the art of searching for this good. I should note here that uh, this discussion takes place over the first several pages. It probably doesn't look sound a lot like this as you're reading it. The Nicomachean Ethics is a really, really, really tough read. Um, hopefully, if you keep just stay with me in the videos, you will uh, figure out what's going on, then maybe do another read-through after that to see uh, where things are happening. Aristotle, because these were delivered as lectures, they sort of go all over, all over the place. So, uh, just try to stay with me and uh, follow along with the lecture and the PowerPoint, and uh, you'll be all right. So we know politics is the action, the science of figuring out what the ultimate good is. Well, politics isn't just that, obviously. Politics has some other jobs, too. Politics is the task of legislating what we should do and shouldn't do. Um, that means that politicians should encourage some things, paying taxes, being a good citizen, etc., and discourage other things, murder, rape, burglary, those are all bad things. So, since politicians need to tell us at least the basics of what we should and shouldn't do, they ought to know something about what we should and shouldn't do. This is why the goal of politics is to figure out what the ultimate good is. So, the ultimate goal of politics to, is to figure out that good, and that good is going to help them do two things. First of all, have good citizens in the country, and second of all, to have happy citizens. These seem like two separate things. Aristotle is going to argue that they're really not separate things, that being happy is being good, and being good is being happy. We'll see how he does this. He's going to talk a little bit about happiness first. And so first of all, he's going to ask, what does it mean to live a happy life? Well, it's important to note here that happiness is not sort of just being happy like pleasure. Um, the Greek word here is eudaimonia, and it, it means happiness sometimes, it also means sort of flourishing, so like living a really great life. So he's going to say it's not just pleasure... Um, we don't think it's just living like a pig, the way he's going to define it. Nor is it being honored, because we give honor for reasons. We give, we give honor uh, because you deserve it, not just because you're happy. And it doesn't just make you happy, it makes you happy for a reason. Nor is happiness just money. Um, as the quote goes, money can't buy happiness. Money is an instrumental good. We talked about this before. It sounds like, then, there, maybe there are a whole bunch of goods, because all of these things are good sometimes. So there's not just one good, Aristotle's going to say, there are a bunch. He disagrees with Plato here.